This is the most drama-filled bar rescue episode ever. Be sure to watch till the end, since this is sure to leave you on the edge of your seat. We're referring to the infamous Thugs with Mugs episode featured in the fourth season of the show. So much happened in this episode that it's insane. Talk my like always. Talk, 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 talk. No, no work. The bar, called Undisputed Sports Bar and Grill, was opened in 2009 by an infamous boxer named Miguel Torres. Additionally, he got the help of his childhood friend slash teammates Brian O'Shea. While they were sharing their stories, O'Shea revealed that he and his partner invested $50,000 into the business. The bar, situated in Yonkers, New York, had a boxing concept that caught the eye of many and very quickly it became a popular hangout. In the beginning, the bar made around $50,000 in just one month, which was the initial capital they invested. Soon, the popularity of the bar captivated O'Shea, who quickly started using the bar as his own personal party zone. Needless to say, his recklessness was destructive to their business. We're losing about $3,500 a month. If it keeps going this way, I'm gonna lose a good friend of mine. The bar's quality and security deteriorated over time, and customers eventually started to frequent safer places. At the time that this episode was being taped, they were losing around $3,000 a month. O'Shea let the bar's initial popularity get to his head, and this is what their bartender and chef had to say about that. Yo, give me two more shots, Margos. Yeah, so O'Shea doesn't come across as the most responsible boss, does he? He was even confronted by Torres, his partner. He told them that the money they were losing was coming out of their pockets, and it wasn't the right time and place to have fun at the expense of others. Basically, to sum this up, he told them that he's a terrible owner. At this point, the boxing partners were $120,000 in debt, had their lifelong friendship on the line, and were close to losing their business for good. Torres was greatly pained by the situation they were in and reminisced about how they used to have big dreams. He said this, Brian and I have been hustlers since we little kids. We're always trying to make some extra cash. And I told him when we tried opening up a sports bar. It really makes us wonder, why did O'Shea start behaving so differently? First, let's cover the main issue at hand, the bar. Later, when Taffer arrived, he sent in a team of people for recon who found multiple things wrong with the bar. From warm beer, to fridge doors being left open, to even wings being undercooked, these were just a few of the many issues present. While Torres walked around to serve customers, O'Shea did nothing but sip on his own beer. O'Shea was clearly drunk and Torres was pissed at his lack of responsibility. Just when you thought things would settle down, this happened. With two feuding partners and several jobs on the line, Taffer intervenes to rescue the bar. Russell Davis, an expert bartender, learned from Blue, the head bartender, that the owners were resorting to some really cheap practices. Check this out. Putting cheaper brands of alcohol into premium spirit bottles. That's the type of thing that gets your liquor license taken away and your bar shut down. Now come on, that's not what you'd expect from a reputable bar, right? They're practically scamming the customers in broad daylight. But that wasn't the only issue. Most drinks were being stored beyond their shelf life, and the refrigerator was set to 60 degrees when it should have been 40. Before someone got sick, Taffer swiftly shut the bar down. Thing in this kitchen and pull every customer's plate before they get sick. Shortly after, the two owners were reprimanded by Taffer and Davis for placing cheap alcohol in expensive bottles. Check out what happened next. Which one of you two, or is it both of you, are pouring cheap liquor? into premium bottles. Things only escalated from here. A huge fight broke out in the bar, and this is what happened when a customer wasn't served on time. During the fight, Taffer's filming crew was attacked as well, which was horrible to watch. The fight only ended after the cops showed up. Tanya, Torres' wife, and the assistant manager of the bar was hysterical and got really upset. <laughs> The next day, the bar rescue crew had a safety meeting. One of the employees expressed that they felt very uncomfortable going back to work without any security. The lieutenant of the police department said that they wouldn't tolerate this kind of behavior as well. I think just on mere presence, uh, they're not going to show up. When Taffer eventually met with all of the staff members, check out how Tanya exploded with tons of complaints. I hate it. He hasn't been doing his part, I don't believe, as a Who? owner. Brian. Tanya and O'Shea got into a screaming match while everyone just watched. Things got even more uncomfortable when Taffer brought out a former employee named Jenny. This is really starting to sound like a soap opera. Anyway, when he asked her why she quit, Jenny said that she was too scared to continue working there. Why did you quit, Jen? I was bartending alone and customers were complaining. Their drink wasn't strong enough. As soon as I turned around to the register, the glass was first thrown at me and that was it, mayhem. 
She even went as far as to say that she feared for her life and it took a massive toll on her mental health. That's just shocking. Taffer then asked the employees to raise their hands if they felt safe working at the bar, and not a single person raised their hands. Who feels safe working in this bar? Raise your hand. Not one hand. After a lot of restraint, Taffer finally blew up on O'Shea for his horrible behavior and how his filming crew was attacked the night before. The way he raised his voice will surely leave a chill up your spine. This has to be the loudest Taffer has ever gotten on the show. My family was disrespected here, threatened, endangered, and you're standing in a corner drunk. The famous rescuer then told the two owners that he couldn't help and care for them when they put his crew at risk and jeopardized their safety. I mean, after all, he was there to help them, but these guys just didn't deserve it at all. But thankfully, Taffer's words got through to O'Shea, and he ended up taking responsibility for his poor behavior and the safety issues at the bar. He even genuinely told Taffer that he wanted to do better. And guess what? He even apologized for his behavior. I'm really sorry for the cameraman, and whoever got hit, and whoever had a field scared. None of us saw that coming, right? Soon after, Taffer asked O'Shea to consider his friend's family, who were depending on the business for a living. While it wasn't very clear at first, O'Shea revealed that he had two kids himself and had nothing else to fall back on either. These were really some desperate times. I didn't do the best I could do to keep her safe. She shouldn't have been bartended alone, and I'm taking responsibility for that because that's my fault. That's when Taffer's team of experts finally decided to train the staff. While Chef Aaron taught the kitchen staff how to properly cook wings, mixologist Davis taught the head bartender how to make three simple drinks. Since the stress test was steadily approaching, Taffer decided to talk to the owners about the elephant in the room, which was their issue with safety. And this is what he had to say. Before we open tonight, I'm starting with a security meeting. I want to make sure this bar is safe. If the customers and the employees aren't safe, it shouldn't be in business. He also told the owners that he wanted to see them working together as a team and as professionals. O'Shea, who hadn't even shown an ounce of responsibility up until this point, stepped things up and ensured the night went by safely. He even told the crew that he wanted to prove Taffer wrong and that he could be a sober guy who could manage the place right. However, during the stress test, the staff got overwhelmed with orders and this happened. 20 wings, where's table two? This is your order. The workplace got super chaotic since they got raided with customers. Additionally, the orders took way too long since they were understaffed. But things took a turn for the worse when a customer found this in her straw. I just sucked up a piece of glass through my straw. Wait, did a customer really just find shards of glass in her drink? This bar was unsafe in every sense of the word. By now, Taffer was exhausted. He went as far as to say that no matter how hard they tried, they were bound to fail. When asked about their experience, this is what the customers had to say. Not very great, am I right? They can't possibly succeed no matter how hard they try. It was around this time that Taffer got together with his team to reconsider their rescue strategy. From the owners to the customers that frequented this bar, there was absolutely nothing usual about this place. In fact, they considered the crowd in the neighborhood to be very rowdy. They actually anticipate that they're going to be mean to each other before they even open their mouths. Yes. So Taffer, Chef Aaron, and mixologist Davis brainstormed a new concept for the bar. They wanted to create something with a Manhattan upscale feel and got down to planning every single detail. In the meantime, the staff go through some rigorous training and Taffer begins implementing his ideas for the bar. As he explains the concept to Torres and O'Shea, the two owners seemed excited and had this to say. Everything about the bar he wants to do, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that Manhattan look. We're gonna have a spot that's better than any place in Yonkers ever had. They looked so happy, right? But not as happy as we are when we put out content for you. Before we continue, you should consider dropping a massive like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free, so why not just do it? Anyway, let's get back to the video. By the end of the episode, O'Shea and Torres were in love with their new bar and even embraced each other with excitement. Jenny too voiced her opinion on the renovation and it's the sweetest thing you'll hear all day. As a part of the revamp, Taffer installed a new draft beer and cooler system for the bar and spent $90,000 to improve the refrigeration system. As they relaunched, customers were happy and thrilled with the new setup and even felt safe coming in. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for coming. Welcome to Soyo. However, just a couple months later, sales went down by 60% and the bar owners had several run-ins with the cops. From shootings outside the bar to people being charged with six different felonies, the Soyo Craft Bar was back to being awful. They tried everything to keep it going, but in March of 2018, they called it quits and shut the place down for good. So, which moment did you think was the most intense? Let us know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, guys.